On this episode of Fishing Edge, Ben Little and myself continue our fishing adventure on a remote beach in the Kimberley, north of Broome. Let me just say, it's really nice to stay in motels and do all that sort of stuff, but to get out here and do some camping, it's what Australia's all about. And Ben, I camping on the beach north of Broome, something I, I never thought I would do, but it's been a whole lot of fun, mate. How good is it? I mean, we've got the water right there. We've got a camp right here. Sausage is cooking for brekkie. It's a little cold this morning, and I didn't realise it actually got cold in this part of the but world. I didn't realise it got foggy either. No, no, the fog's rolling in. However, the weather is still sensational. Today, we're heading out offshore, and what are we chasing, mate? Just got to go trolling, mate. Yep. Likely to catch tuna, mackies, cobia. If we can get over some shallow reefs, some coral trout, and some other reef species, if we can. Sounds pretty good. Endless options, lots and lots of fish. <laughs> we better finish our sausages and our coffee and get out of here. slowing down I assume that means we're here. It certainly is mate. Beautiful. Now Benno the plan today is something that I absolutely love and that's trolling. I don't care if it's for trout or marlin I just like trolling I don't know why <laughs> and I think though it's because too many people just throw lures out the back and hope they get a bite. If you do it actively and you work the areas, it's it's a bit of an art, isn't it? it certainly is. Well, we're going to try and stack it some lures today. So. Yep. Beautiful and we've got a range of lures the Williamson Speed Pro is very quickly becoming a hot favourite of mine. It's a shallow running, extremely tough bodied minnow. And the great thing about this, with that bib shape, you can pull this guy at like 12 knots. But even if you're towing it just at normal eight knot speed, you can run it on light tackle because that light bib doesn't pull too hard. Great lure, like I said, tough as nails and I absolutely love them. Benno's got some X wraps there as well. And you said, mate, chuck the hot orange on. Yeah, I think it's a bib, mate. That high vis bib. Yep. Does the damage, I reckon. Trout love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's funny, the reef fish love that sort of stuff, but um, I'm going with the good old redhead because that is like the uh, steak and three veggies of Western Australia and Northern Australia. Well, if you haven't got one of them in your box, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, it certainly is. So the plan today, bit of trolling, some mackerel, who knows, cobia, trevally, could be anything. Sales and marlin are definitely on the menu too. Yeah. That'll do as a bit of a bonus. We've also got a couple of casting rods ready just in case we see some tuna or some bust ups. And either way, it is an absolutely belting day. So let's get to fishing. <laughs> We had the trolling gear out and Benno spotted just three turns. He goes, rip the gear in. We've got a few tuna just popping around the area now. He's got a little 30 gram slug. I've got the triple X wrap cast on. And they're a bit flighty, so we're in the area. Now we'll just sit here and they'll pop back up again. And it's just a matter of playing sort of cat and mouse. You've got to work out which way the fish are feeding. When they do get above them, above them being upwind, there's fish there, mate. And we'll drift down onto them. There we go, got him. There we go. It's as quick as that. It's all about getting your lure in the right spot, getting it in front of the fish. Benno's on. Ah, that's why you love this stuff. This is just my little four kilo Imperium with 12 pound braid as my snapper spin stick. And it might seem light for doing this sort of stuff, but it is just ideal quite simply because you can throw your lures a long way and that's what it's all about, being able to cast the distance to get the bite. I could just do this for weeks on end. I love this stuff. The Latio X40 with some 30 pound Black Magic Tough Trace. A couple of small lures and you can get yourself into so much fun. What are you thinking mate, long tails or max? I think there was a bit of a mix in there so. Yeah. Your guess is as good as mine. I think I'm underneath you. We've got our lines tangled here. Oh, no, we're crossed. Let's go this way. How's that? That seems a bit better. 
There we go. Mine's sort of just plugging around under the boat like tuna do. No, they're not done yet. No. Nah. You see Benno's just using very smooth rod movements to feed this fish. Jerking the rod and pulling erratically on them doesn't really work on tuna. Nice fish though. Far away is yours. Um, I don't know mate, I can't see him yet. I'll walk him around the back here, see if I can get him in the light. I'll get this one in the boat. All right, mine's here too, mate. I'm gonna just get mine on the same side as you. Yours looks like it's done more than yeah, mine. Yeah, mine's pretty done, mate. He's just managed to... Do you want me to lead yours for you, or...? Yeah, you're right, I'll, I'll get mine. I'll just tail him, you grab yours. That's why I love these longer, softer rods. They're just so sort of forgiving. There we go. You are right with yours, mate? Yeah, it went just under you, but... There we go. Job done. And he actually managed to lasso himself. And that is a fantastic sports fish, whether you spin them off the rocks in New South Wales or catch them up here in north of Broome. And you see that X-wrap there. Both these lures have got little single hooks in them. And they make life much easier and much safer, but... Heaps better for letting them go, Benno. Oh, it's better on the fish and safer for our fingers. There you go, there's that little single VMC out. Beautiful little fish, mate. Pigeon power, I'll get mine back, give you end. No dramas, man. And I'll do the same with this guy. There you go, straight out. I'll shoot this guy back. That is a beautiful tuna, mackerel tuna, named so because of those slimy mackerel sort of stripes on the back. They're not great eating. They're great bait for giant black marlin though, mate. They certainly are, mate, and I'm hoping that we can actually get out further and see if we can cut. target a few more of them. He's off. Now check this out. This is what I love about fishing. You always get to see really cool things, and the cool things can be anything from a whale jumping out the back there to what these tuna are feeding on. That's a pretty big bait for a mac tuna, isn't it? it certainly is, mate. That's a squid hood, arrow squid hood, and that is very, very fresh, mate. It's still got all the spots on the skin, and that there shows just how easily these single hooks work. They're just perfect for catching tuna, but you always have that little bit of confidence, don't you, Benno, when you hook a big fish on a single hook? They go in a hell of a lot easier than any treble ever has. That's so it. That's my favorite thing to do. I have put these in my hand too. They go in your hand really easily. Let's get back to fishing. <laughs> that's cool. Change of tactics, Benno. Well, the mackerel certainly fighting. No, they weren't. It was very, very quiet on the, the trolling hard bodies thing. And we headed south. Is that where we've yeah, come? Yeah, south yeah, from where we west. launched? And we've actually run into a whole pile of bait. And I think it was actually Benno's sneaky little tactic. And he goes, Lee, I think it's time to pull in the minnows, get the daisy chains in the water, and you get to rigging some skip baits, because I reckon we might find some sailfish. And I can tell you now, we've been here about 30 seconds or long enough to rig some baits and get this stuff sorted. And there's little bits of bait flicking everywhere and mate, I'm a little bit excited. If there's one thing I know about Marlin, find the bait, find the fish. Sailfish is exactly the same, mate. Let's get to it. Whether it's striped marlin on the east coast or sailfish on the west coast or up north, they love teasers. And this is a daisy chain, it's a whole lot of rubber squid. I've got my Moldcraft chugger hanging off the back. That makes a whole lot of carry on and commotion. There's no hooks in it. And this is just purely and simply to pull the sailfish up. We'll feed this guy out the back. I'll just drop him over the side here, whoop, round that rod, lower him out the back. And this just skitters along the surface, makes a whole lot of commotion. It's just on a short bit of rope. We get it back into that clear water, and as all we're looking for is a bill or a fin popping out of the water, or quite often just a dark smudge, and that'll be a sailie or a whole lot of his mates sitting behind the teaser. When they pop up, we've got two baits here ready, and can easily just throw a bait back at the sailfish and get that very visual sort of bite. It's a, it's a stack of fun. I'll get this other teaser in the water. This is exactly the same, but Benno, this has got your little sneaky bit on the back end. Mate, that is like a lollipop to a child. Really? Yeah, mate, they don't let go of those when they're on there. That's a baby queen fish. They've got skin that is literally like leather, and the great thing about that is the old sailie or the black marlin can come up and chew on it, and not a lot's gonna happen to it, is it? No, not until the bait goes back in, in their face. That's it. We'll get this guy out there as well, and fingers crossed, we find some fish.
That is going. I couldn't help myself. I saw a fish smash up near the boat and I just grabbed the spin rod. Sorry, Benno. You all right? I couldn't help myself. <laughs> no time like the present. So many birds around, so many fish, so much bait. We are chasing sailfish, but there was an opportunity there. Just had to take it. What have we got here? What have we got? Oh, is he gone? I think he might be gone, mate. I think I did him. Yeah. Oh, hang on. No, he's still there. He's having a bit of a go. A lot of activity here, Benno. I just can't believe the amount of furs. There's fish busting up everywhere. I think you got a tuna there, mate. It's just good, because where there's tuna. Where the sailors hang? Yeah, and the blacks. Oh, okay, yep. You see here, rather than tighten in the drag, I'm just putting my fingers on the spool. Best thing about that is that if the fish does anything, you can just take your hands off. You haven't fiddled with the actual drag pressure. That fish just popped up near the surface and he looked a lot like a Mac tuna. So now I'm really starting to put the heat on him because I want to land him because out there, about half a kilometre, it looks like the sky's falling with the amount of birds that are <laughs> bombing the water. Here we go, Benno. A lot of guys will just say, oh, it's just a Mac tuna, but I tell you what, they're a great sports fish. That little X wrap cast, I actually took that back, the front hook off it, sorry. So it just has the one. Great thing about that is it makes it very easy to grab your lure. You don't have to worry about getting hooks in yourself. There we go. Beautiful looking fish. And you are out of here because we need to get over there. A lot of people might be surprised that when you're using skip baits or pitch baits for billfish and tuna and stuff, you don't need heaps and heaps of gear. You need a very organized little kit. This is a roll of wax thread and this is what we use to stitch the baits up. It's nice and thin because the baits we're using here are only very small. Back on the east coast where we might be using big slimy mackerel or up in Cairns where they're using often 20 kilo baits, they'll use much thicker wax thread because it's much stronger. I've got that wax thread. I've got a little needle wallet here a little leather pouch just like that and it's got little bridle rigging needles for when we want to tow a live bait but it's also got a range of little stitchy needles from little tiny guys like that right up to some much heavier duty surgical steel rigging needles these guys are for the big hard baits before these little baits i'll just use the short small needles having them in a little kit like that makes life very easy a little pair of braid scissors or any sort of scissors like that just for trimming baits and trimming thread and doing stuff like that that bait's now stitched up. I've stitched the hook, which is a KL70 and some 80 pound Black Magic Tough Trace to the bait. The hook's sitting out the front with plenty of hook exposure and we've stitched the head to the body so that when a fish comes up and grabs it, we don't end up ripping the body off and just get left with a head bait. It's a very simple process. It's something worth practicing at home. Get some baits, practice stitching them up so that you can get them nice and neat. This is nothing special, let me tell you. There's guys out there that do it for a living and they just do it like with surgical precision, but this is gonna do us for today. One on the left teaser, left teaser, he's on the pusher. He's on the teaser, he's on it. One on the right teaser too. There's a few fish there. There's two there, There's two there. Just drop your bait back to him. We've got fish up here on the teaser. There's a couple of sailfish, and I'm just feeding back this little skip bait, holding the rod high. I want this bait to skip here. He's got it. There he goes. He's got it. Just free spooling him. And I should hit him about now, I reckon, Benno. Oh, yeah, he'd be right, I reckon. And just winding into him. And here we go. You should just wig out here. We got him on. Let him go. There he goes, out the back. Do you want to go with double? Yeah, if you want, man. Go for it. Get the double on for sure. We've got another fish still here on the teaser. Here he comes, here he comes, he's on it, he's on it, he's on it. Benno's on. We have a double on sailfish. 
and our mackerel fishing's turned into sailfish fishing. Look at him go. Oh, it's one right here in the teaser. He's there? Yeah. Oh, he is too. Look at that. See if we can pull him up. He's got my bait. He got the bait off the back of Caesar. Did he? Yeah. And it's just that very, very simple formula in any sort of fishing, but especially billfish. Find the bait, find the fish. We drove around, saw some bait on the surface, and I don't think we got one lap out of it. Did we, Benno, oh, before no, the fish were good, up? That was a good cross. I'm over the You're top over of me. Yep. Yeah. And this is just light tackle. This is my little Cortez with 10 kilo mono on it. Benno's just got the 10 kilo spin out fit with braid. And he's got himself a very upset sailing. <laughs> I'm actually getting low on line. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah. If we have to, we'll just go back the other way. See if we can't just tow mine along with this. Oh man, mine's way yeah, out. You're a long way out. I'm going to neutral. Yeah, we'll just see what we can do here. I'll get out of the way. I've just got a whole lot of winding to do, but Benno's fish is a bit closer, so that line is just pink. Mono, it's great for this sort of stuff because you can see where your line is, and I do love mono for billfish and tuna and stuff like that because it's got that bit of stretch in it. The actual thickness of the line helps to keep the hook in when the fish has got a lot of line out because of the belly and the drag. How you going there, Benno? Yeah, he's getting a bit tired. You tend to find in this cooler water though, they've got a bit of punch to them still, so wouldn't mind seeing if this guy's got a bit more poke to him. Good fun on light tackle. They're just such an awesome sport fish. Aren't they? You are right, mate? I'll just grab him by the bill for you. Oh, look at the colours in him. Perfect hook in the corner of the mouth. Look at that. You right with that, with no gloves, mate, or you right? Yeah, no, no, that's fine, mate. And that's why we use the circle hooks, just like we do for snapper and mulloway and whatever it is. Look at those colours. He's only a pipsqueak. He's probably only 12, 13 kilo. Really? Yeah. Good sign, too, when they put their sail up and their fins out, it means that they're still OK. It's when they go all bronze and sail down that that's not such a good sign. It just means they're a bit stressed out. Look at him go. Better go get mine now, I suppose. Yeah, horse, mate. Well done, Benny. No worries. Nice How good work, was that? Pal. Ten minutes of sailing fishing, and the bait's popping back up again. Look at this. This is what I was talking about before. There's just little bait, and it's only small, small bait, just flicking on the surface here. And those sailfish, they hunt in what's called pods. Might be anything from just two or three to 50 or 60 of them, who knows, at times. And they'll just put those big sails up and round the bait up into balls and then take their turn at eating it. But one thing I think sailfish can't help themselves with, Benno, they just cannot help themselves on a teaser, can they? They cannot, mate. You <laughs> saw how crazy they were going. That, that other one even ate the guts out of the teaser before it ate the bait, yeah. and the bait is now gone. Yeah, you just see him going, oh, I've got to eat everything. And that wasn't a huge fish that ate the teaser? No. No, he was only probably a 15 kilo fish, but he ate a queenie that was that big. Yep. So they are aggressive beasts. All righty. Spool's looking a bit healthier now, Benno. That was good, we had those four, four or five up there and chances are there's going to be more of them in there. Yeah, it's always nice when you raise a few, isn't it? Because you know you can go back and work them. They won't move off that bait. Here he comes towards us. There we go. See that long, long leader there and that's just 80 pound Black Magic Tough Trace. Look at that blue fin light up. Fishing light leaders here because you, you don't need to fish heavy. You'll get more bites. It makes it easy to get that bait to skip. Just leadering him up. Reels in free spool, ratchets on. It's pretty cool to be able to do it all single-handedly, quite literally. And there's every chance this little fish, which could be about 18 kilo, Ben. Yeah, he's pushing up around that. Yeah, you know, grow up to be 70, even 80 kilos. They just love this broom area. And it's probably one of the things that makes the broom fishery so famous. There we go, mate. Yeah, got that sticky rough build. Look at that. I just love billfish, thanks. Man. How awesome was that? That's too good, man. Double up straight up. That was too easy. That's yeah, what it was, that's but awesome. man, that's why you come to Broome. Sailfish, let's get some more.